Today, we're making the easiest strawberry crunch topping for a delicious strawberry crunch cheesecake cake. Let's get started. Okay, so these are all the ingredients that I need. It's pretty simple. I mean, you probably already have everything in your cupboard. Um, we're going to use a 3.4 ounce box of vanilla instant pudding and pie filling. It needs to say instant pudding and pie filling. Uh, and we have a strawberry gelatin jello. This is going to be the strawberry flavoring. So all you need is a quarter cup of flour for each jello packet. So the, each packet is going to get a quarter cup of flour. Uh, we need a stick of butter. We're going to divide this and about a sleeve of Lorna Doom shortbread cookies. That's going to make it even more buttery, even more delicious. Oh, also in prep, make sure you have a sheet pan lined with nonstick uh, foil. You could also use parchment paper, but I find that nonstick foil works perfectly. We're going to set that aside. And I'm going to start with the vanilla. I'm just going to open this up along with a quarter cup of flour, measure it correctly. I suggest you spoon and level it in. Don't just dunk the flour or the measuring cup into the flour. Actually spoon it, level it to make sure that you don't have too much flour or the final recipe won't taste good. It'll taste like flour. <laughs> I'm just kind of giving that a rough mix. So I'm gonna measure out a half of this butter Dump that into that bowl. Try not to make a mess. <laughs> kind of fold this in until all of the dry is coated with that delicious softened butter. I like using unsalted butter in my recipe so I can control the level of salt. Just making sure that all my flour and jello is coated with butter. But it'll look close to a pie dough or maybe a cookie dough once everything is coated. Now I'm going to use the same bowl because I don't like washing dishes. <laughs> Wipe some of this to the side. I'm going to take my pan and pour this on here. It's all going to get crumbled together. I did see a few comments on my first video asking why I separated it because I want to. Okay. <laughs> That's why I separated it. <laughs> I like doing half seeds. If you want to throw it all together, throw it all together. So I'm going to set this aside and I'm going to do the same concept with my strawberry gelatin. Add in a quarter cup of flour, same measurements as before, kind of mix the flour up a little bit. And then we're going to fold in the other half of our softened butter. It smells so strawberry e strawberry esque strawberry e. I'm making a mess, but that's okay. If you cook or bake, you know it's messy, but it's gonna taste good. Okay, I'm gonna slide this to the side, and then I'm going to add this half of the strawberry crunch to my pan. Spread it out of taste. This strawberry uh, tends to get a little bit more loose than the vanilla. Just because this is gelatin, this is pudding and pie filling, but it's going to eventually fold together nicely. So don't, don't worry too much. This is going to go in the oven at 350 for about five to seven minutes. Shake it after five minutes. See what it's looking like. So we're just looking to cook this, not brown. Don't burn it. It will burn quickly if you don't watch it. Five to seven minutes, seven minutes max. This is our strawberry crunch fresh out of the oven. This has to cool completely. Leave it alone. Let it sit for at least two hours before we finish and create our crumble. This is the cool crumble. And before I start on that, I'm actually going to crumble up some Lorna Doom cookies. So I'm going to set this aside and I'm going to bring in a mini food processor. You could use a big food processor. You could use 
a blender maybe a neutral bullet or whatever you have but we're just going to make these big pieces into smaller pieces and we're going to dump them in our bag Now there you have it, strawberry crunch. This is a lot. I would say this is about four cups, maybe. So depending on what you're doing, this is definitely enough for our strawberry crunch cake. You can use this for cupcakes, pancakes, any type of crumble. You want to crumble, you can use this strawberry crunch. It's going to be delicious, super easy, super delicious. Try it out. Let me know what you think. I'm prepping my pan for my cheesecake, so I'm going to spray it with a little bit of canola oil so everything can pop out nicely. And I'm going to pop in my non-stick, which is also good, my non-stick parchment circle. See, I didn't have to cut anything. See how much time you say? Listen, buy you some pre-cut parchment circles. Spray that a little bit. And we're going to set this aside and prepare our cheesecake layer. So I'm just doing a basic cheesecake for the middle. It's two blocks of softened full fat cream cheese. I'm going to add in three quarters cup of granulated sugar. And I'm going to blend this until smooth and creamy, until the sugar dissolves, which will take about maybe two to three minutes on medium, medium high. After taking the crumble out, the oven was at 350. I've dropped the oven temp down to 325 in preparation for the cheesecake. So right now I'm gonna add these eggs in one at a time with my mixer on low, just to make sure that the egg, which is a liquid, incorporates into the cheesecake, the fat, well, basically. That's why you have to add your eggs one, in, one at a time. Scrape down our bowl because that also helps make sure everything melts and melts and blends together well. I typically blend each egg for about 20 seconds just to make sure it is incorporated fully. So once that's fully incorporated, we're going to add the rest of our ingredients. I always, like I said, add a little bit of salt. This is a pinch, which is a 1 16th of a teaspoon. I'm going to add about a teaspoon of vanilla and then I'm going to add some full fat sour cream that's going to give our cheesecake the classic twang that lets us know it is in fact a delicious cheesecake so it also adds moisture so add that in I'm going to blend this until it's just combined and pour it into our pan Typically you do bake cheesecake in a water bath, but not this time. This is super easy, super basic. We're gonna slide this in our oven for about 45-ish minutes. Here we go. So this is the cheesecake freshly out of the oven. And bring you a little closer. As you can see, it's still slightly jiggly. But trust me, as it cools, it will set nice and firm. You still want a slight jiggle to make sure it's not overbaked. Um, my oven heats top down, so you do see a little bit of the browning at the top, but that's fine. Like I said, it's going in between two layers of cake, so nobody's going to care about this. So we're going to let this sit for at least four hours. I would recommend you refrigerate overnight, which is what I'm going to do, and, and then I'm going to make the strawberry cake layers let that sit overnight and we're going to assemble tomorrow so let's move on to the strawberry portion i like to use betty crocker super moist cake for the strawberry cake mix because it's delicious i mean <laughs> along with some jello pudding i have several recipes on my channel and on my website that use jello pudding with 
cake mix. It adds so much moisture and flavor. It's basically a doctored box mix that tastes delicious. So I'm gonna add a pinch of salt to this. And I'm gonna add everything that the box mix suggests. One third cup of vegetable oil, three eggs. And instead of using water, we're gonna use the same amount of milk. It makes your box cake taste more homemade. Another thing that does that as well is vanilla. So I'm gonna add a teaspoon of vanilla to this cake and I'm gonna whip for two minutes on medium. So I just blended up my cake. I'm going to put them in my prepared cake pans. All right, let's pour our batter into our prepared eight inch pans evenly. I eyeball it. You could be super technical and weigh it out. I can just pick up the pan and kind of tell, you know, it's clearly not even. So I just Dump a little bit more batter into this one. Pick it up. See which pan is heavier. And even it out a little bit more. I'll even. And I'm going to tap these on the countertop to release some of the air bubbles so that the texture of the cake is more like a homemade cake and not a box mix. Because that is a telltale sign when you have those pockets of air in your cake, people can kind of tell it was made with cake mix. If you pound all those out, it will look like you made it from scratch, which you really did. You just use the box mix as your base. <laughs> okay, now that I've gotten some of my frustration out, we're going to pop these in the oven for three at 350 for however long it says on the box or until a toothpick inserted comes out clean or with a few moist crumbs. my strawberry cakes are out of the oven so i just finished my buttercream american buttercream recipe here i will leave that link in the corners for you it's just a basic american buttercream recipe that is going to go in between our layers and around the cake so our strawberry crunch can stick to it i have my strawberry cake Dr. Box Mix and my basic cheesecake layer here and the delicious strawberry crunch. I'm gonna let everything chill out. I'm actually gonna wrap the cakes with some saran wrap and let them chill in the refrigerator along with the buttercream that I actually can sit at room temp uh, overnight. And I'm gonna assemble everything tomorrow because a cake is easier to assemble when everything is cold, the butters will be solid and it won't kind of slide everywhere. So tomorrow we put, we'll put everything together and we'll finish up our delicious strawberry cheesecake crunch bake. I'm back and next day ready to assemble my cakes. I'm gonna put a little buttercream on the bottom of the cake board just so my first layer sticks. Just gonna use my fingers to center this on the board. Add a thin layer of buttercream. I'm trying not to, I'm just using figure eight motions with the frosting. I'm trying not to lift my offset spatula up because that could cause crumbs in your buttercream. Making sure my offset spatula doesn't, I don't lift it. I'm just trying to keep my hand level. Make sure you take the parchment off. I've definitely done that. Press, and you can use your offset spatula to kind of make sure everything is is even kind of all you basically need is a crumb coat on this cake because the outside layer is strawberry crunch and then the cake you don't really want it to be super sweet because every element is sweet so technically don't need a thick layer of frosting on the outside now i'm concentrating on this space here because you can have air pockets that get trapped and that will cause you to have a blowout 
on your cake, like a big air bubble that'll start getting bigger and bigger over time. So I'm gonna concentrate my frosting in those cracks to push out all that air. So the cake, the side of the cake remains flat. I'm just swaying my offset spatula back and forth with firm pressure, not too hard. You don't wanna disturb the cake, but you do want to make sure you push. The great thing about the strawberry crunch cake is you don't have to worry about even sides like you would in the cake that's going to be decorated. Just kind of working that frosting in and making sure my hand is level with the cake as much as possible and using my turntable to do most of the work. If you do decide to get into cake decorating, I suggest you do some wrist exercises because it is a wrist workout. Cakes like these are actually good to get started because they don't have to be perfect. But you don't have to worry about straight sides as much with a cake like this because it's going to be covered in crunch. Okay, now I have my sheet pan here. I have my crunch here. And this sheet pan is going to catch all the crumbs from the crunch so I can reuse them. This is another reason why I like working with a cold cake because I do have to lean this up and it, if everything was room temperature, it'd be wonky and wobbling everywhere because this is heavy. So another pro tip for working with a cold cake. Grab a print handful of crunch. Just go up the sides of your cake. Press it in. Yep, I'm covering pretty good. And this technique you can use for like a sprinkle cake. Confetti sprinkles, non -parels. Uh You could even do like chocolate shavings and press them onto the side of the cake as decoration. You want to apply firm pressure, but not press too hard that you're denting your cake or your frosting. So use the palm, the fingers, not your palm. Use your fingers to gently apply the crunch. Keeping your hand contoured and curved to the shape of the cake. Now you see how I have the cake leaning like this? If this cake was room temperature, this thing would have slid off of here in no time. That's another reason working with the cold cake is ideal. That looks great. This is a messy cake, so crunch is gonna get everywhere. So I'm gonna clean up, come back. But doesn't that look good? Look at that. So our cake has been chilling in the refrigerator. I'm not just a bit, and I have a piping bag with a tip on it. I have no idea what size tip this is. I'm just gonna pipe some swirls on the top, and we'll be done. And that's a wrap on my strawberry crunch cheesecake cake. You've seen how simple it is to doctor a box mix for the strawberry cake layers combined with a creamy homemade cheesecake and top it off with my nostalgic homemade strawberry crunch topping. If you've fallen head over heels for this recipe, don't forget, head over to my website. The link is in the description below where you can view and print the recipe to try it for yourself. And I love to hear how it goes. Drop your thoughts, questions, or your own baking tips in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.